You know what, it might be about time to make room for new crafts. Come to think about it, I never actually used Cthulhu once. This thing has just been collecting dust. I think this is a great opportunity to show you what I do with crafts that don't make it to the gaming table. There must have at least a few terrain builds hiding in shame, collecting dust. Wouldn't it be epic if we could take these old builds and turn them into a beautiful sea diorama? That's my challenge to you. Looks like Cthulhu will get another chance for redemption. Welcome to another episode of Frankie D Crafter. This week we're taking yet another challenge by our friend over at Bard's Craft. I have chosen Cthulhu as my champion to make an epic looking diorama. My thoughts going into this is to get my priorities straight and first on my list is obviously making it epic. Second on my list is making it playable. Third is to basically make a story out of it. And last but maybe least, I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, is the tutorial part. Pretty sure Bartscraft is gonna do a better job at that than me on this. So I'm gonna concentrate on the other ones a little bit more. And before we jump into this whole hot mess, don't forget to subscribe. If you won't wanna miss any of this madness, now back to the madness. First of all, we need to fix up Cthulhu just a bit. He looks like he was designed by a Jojo fan. Please, no nani jokes in the comment section below. It looks like he was designed by somebody that just finished watching the Baki series on Netflix. Matter of fact, he looked like he was at the gym when the quarantine hit and just never left. But in all seriousness, I do need to add a bit of texture to him. He looks a bit too basic at the moment. I need to add something to help me paint him later on. I'll be adding air dry clay to his shoulders, his back, a little bit on his cheeks, and I'll be getting rid of his wings. I mean, I could fix his buff ass body and make him less ripped, but I don't, I don't want a body shame, you know? Especially since I'm doing a collab with Bartscraft and I don't want him to feel self-conscious about how swole he's getting. We don't bully in this channel, you know what I'm saying? Why are you on my side of the bed, you little piece of crap? You little piece of crap? You think you're gonna take my spot? You're not better than me? You're not better than nobody. Little piece of crap. The base definitely has to come off. This man looked like he playing water polo at the YMCA. Oh man, I think I took one of his abs. I'm not gonna fix that. Now, let me hit you with some crafting sounds. What do we do now? Hmm. Let's actually get to planning a diorama. You know what they say, right? Failure to plan is planning to look like an idiot on YouTube in front of thousands of people or something like that. One of the biggest issues with encounters at sea is the need of a ship. What is this, one piece? Anyways, I plan to have some stone structures to act as platforms and some shipwreck pieces on giant waves that will be surrounding Cthulhu. Yeah, you heard me right, giant waves. But first, let's make the starting point for this epic adventure. Let's do this with some stones surfacing from the violent sea. I'll be using pink foam for this. 
as it makes it easy and I don't want to make this the main focus of the build. I will be adding some symbols to the platforms. Maybe the party was teleported to this unfortunate place, or maybe they are summoning runes. This is my first attempt at making some glowing runes, so bear with me. If it doesn't come out that good, it, it was Coop's fault. Yeah, we'll go with that one. But if it comes out good, you know me, I got that skill. I think I made the cuts for the runes a little bit too deep. And it's causing me an issue with the black within the white. It was possible for me to just draw on this effect instead of actually carving it out. I'll have to do another project with something like this to test this out more. But I basically work my way from the white to a very dark purple. And I just go in stages, adding a color darker than the next one by one. I'm a sucker for platforms. So I'll be having ship parts just being dragged by the sea in this diorama. I'll be using sanitized sticks, cardboards, planks I prepared beforehand. I had some pink foam pieces that I had already textured as wood laying around. I might as well use it for the project as well. The pink foam is pretty flimsy, especially when you cut it this thin. So I need the cardboard as support. take one of the pieces and then I just start tearing it apart. I'm gonna use this on the sides. It doesn't have to look great since it is a shipwreck so make sure to make it look damaged. I realized that the pole was too long so you know what if I cut it now I got two poles to work with. I just gotta make sure it's not a clean cut and that I make the second part look damaged. One of my favorite things about carving the wood the way I do is the texture I get afterwards when I dry brush it. Here I'm using more sanitized sticks. I'm cutting them using a special technique called splitting them in half. Like this. Aight. Alright, I'm gonna be making a simple shipwreck piece and then from there I'll show you some more complex ones that I made. Make sure to get rid of any spot on this that makes it look like the wood is fresh. Make it either look treated or worn down. This right here is what I'm talking about. Look at that dry brush. Mm. Delicious. Think about the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about Cthulhu. I'll give you some time to go down in the comment section below and tell me what your first thought was. Ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong. I think that was enough time. Or maybe not. You can always pause the video, I guess. Anyways, let me tell you the right answer. Incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. You got it? So this diorama is not telling the story of how you're gonna be Cthulhu. This diorama is gonna be telling the story of how you're gonna escape Cthulhu.
The steps for the water are probably gonna be the easiest of the project. Sculpt the mold is a lifesaver here. I plan to create an aggressive looking ocean by texturing the sculpt mold. I use it in very thin layers. I didn't glue any of the other pieces onto the diorama yet because I didn't want to make the painting process a pain in the ass. To save on using a lot of sculpt mold, I practically made the waves hollow. This is just using sketch paper or newspaper and aluminum. And since the sculpt mold dries so hard, you don't have to worry about you breaking through it unless somebody punches it. I make sure to come to the ends of the waves and uh, make them look a little bit more torn up. This step right here goes a long way. I prepare my colors ahead of time here. Making a few different blues, starting with a dark green blue, dark turquoise, regular blue, and light blue. I start off with the dark green blue, in the flat surface areas of the ocean. I work my way up the waves with the dark turquoise. Then using that same turquoise, I dry brush a little bit on the dark green blue parts. I add the blue closer to the top of the waves and then again dry brush it on the rest of the water. Anytime I would introduce a new color to the water, I would always dry brush it everywhere else or in selected areas. I wasn't done with the water yet, but I needed to start gluing everything together, starting with my man's Cthulhu. I'm using Gorilla Glue Construction Adhesive. It's strong and I like it. That's it. I position everything else around on the water and on the waves for my players to have an opportunity to escape Cthulhu. I add more sculpt mold around everything I just glued. And then continue painting the sea. Cthulhu is a bit on the darker side when it comes to the tones that I painted him with. So I'm making the water around him a little bit lighter so that he can stand out. The last final step for the water is to hit it with the lightest blue I could. I dry brush it everywhere. And then finally hit it with some white. This is the step that matters the most. I choose and pick which spots these highlights will enhance my diorama in the best possible way. I always like to think about motion when it comes to this step. Now this has to be my favorite shot of this whole project and while I was working on it, I, I kinda, I was tuning my own horn. I was tuning my own horn. I think where I failed the first time when I made my Cthulhu figure is that I had no plans for it. At least this time around, I didn't make him as a creature or as a monster. I made him more part of the terrain in the sense of he's not a creature or monster that the players are meant to defeat. This is something that they're supposed to avoid or get away from. You know, it's like almost like a tornado coming through here. It's, it's not up to the players to fight the tornado. All right, I think it's time to hit the table and find out how this turned out. This was a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be. I hope that Bart Scraft handled his business on the other side of this. I'm pretty sure he did. Okay, so he definitely handled his business. I mean, this is pretty cool because we basically gave you two different ways to do water effects. If you're looking for something more aggressive, you can always look at the example I've made. If you're looking for something a little bit more calm, I think, I think this is the process right here.
feel like I gave him a run for his money when it comes to, I guess, crafting the thing. I mean, I gotta admit, mine looks pretty epic. I don't know. I don't know. You let me know. Let me know in the comment section below. Well, it was awesome to have the pleasure to be invited to yet another challenge by Bardscraft. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. You know I'm always up for a challenge. Don't forget to check out how his turned out on his channel. I'll have the link to the video in the description below. And like always, if you enjoy what I do here on the channel, don't forget to check out the Patreon link also in the description below and see how you can help out the channel a little bit more. Was I wearing my glasses for a little? Oh, ah. Oh, now you stop snoring, cop. After I finished? After I finished, you stop snoring? You're lucky you look so cool. Oh, he's, he's going back to snoring. Peace!